trilobites are a fascinating group of invertebrate fossils, very common in the early Paleozoic, that gives a real insight into early life in the oceans, as it was in the Cambrian and Ordovician periods in particular. The name literally means three lobes. You can see on this diagram uh, the different parts of the trilobite split into these different uh, lobes. But it's not uh, this aspect of the trilobite's shell that we are particularly interested in for Ayla. The three divisions of a trilobite shell that we're particularly interested in are the ones shown here the cephalon the thorax, and the pygidium. The cephalon is the trilobite's head. This is where, uh, if it had eyes, these were located, and where the animal's sort of central nervous system, what you might call its brain, I suppose, was located. The thorax is an articulated set of sections which could and move to allow the trilobite to swim or to roll into a ball to protect itself. The pygidium, the rear end of the trilobite, was a solid fused section of its shell. There are some what we call morphological features, features of the animal's shell that we need to be able to identify. These are labelled here on this diagram. Your diagrams need to have these same labels. If we look at what each of these different features actually represents. The glabella is this typically raised section in the middle of the cephalon. It can have a quite a distinctive shape to allow us to identify the trilobite itself. The genal spines are these, well, slightly enigmatic features that come off the trilobite's cephalon. Their use is debated, really. Whether they're used like a snowshoe as support uh, on soft sediment, or as a defensive feature, or simply decoration, we don't know. One of the most fascinating features of a trilobite, though, are its eyes. They're one of the first animals that we have definitive evidence of that they could see. Not all trilobites had eyes. We suspect that those without, perhaps, uh, burrowed into the mud where eyes would have been uh, unnecessary. But those fossils where we do find them, we see these incredible uh, complex compound eyes, some of which had hundreds of individual calcite lenses. This gave the trilobites a tremendous advantage to be able to see, to be able to, in particular, to detect movement with eyes like this, gave it a, a massive advantage over other organisms within that lived in the Cambrian and Ordovician seas. The thoracic segments then are the jointed units of the thorax. Different numbers of thoracic segments characterise different species of trilobites. Now, trilobites are slightly unusual in terms of the fossils we have to study. They had an exoskeleton, perhaps rather than a shell, that supported uh, the body inside, but clearly that was limited in size. So as the trilobite grew at different stages of its life, it would have to uh, break out of this um, exoskeleton along a weakness in its cephalon. The soft-bodied animal then would crawl out of its shell, puff itself up, and secrete a new shell. A bit like crabs do today. It, of course, it would have been uh, incredibly vulnerable when this happened, but it's the only way for the trilobite uh, to go through the different stages of its life. Think of it a bit as 
uh, needing a new pair of shoes uh, as you grow up. As a result, an individual trilobite animal can actually preserve several different fossils, uh, showing different stages of growth, maybe even looking quite different from its juvenile to its adult form. The trilobites are an incredibly diverse group, over 40,000 trilobite species recorded. They live from the Middle Cambrian through to the mass extinction at the end of the Permian period. But really, they reach their peak quite early on in their life history, in the Cambrian and Ordovician. As other animals evolved, the advantages that the trilobites had were dil diluted. They, as a result, were in a long-term decline before the final groups became extinct at the end of the period. But in their time, they were tremendously successful. With this diversity, we see uh, nine different orders of trilobites uh, have been identified. And we can see from this uh, cladogram these different orders then uh, being really quite diverse uh, from relatively early on, uh, from the Cambrian period, through uh, particularly the Ordovician, and then really starting to decline after that. You can see there was only one order which survived uh, even through into the late Paleozoic. There are a huge range of sizes. We see trilobites, um, and this diagram here, 72 centimetres long. Others were perhaps could be measured only in millimetres. For me, though, it's some of the spectacular trilobites found in the rocks in Morocco, like this one. Ornate, spectacularly well adapted to particular environments, full of fascinating features that are well worth exploring in more detail. However, this is the information that you need to know for your ALA. We are going to explore a little bit more about the modes of life of a trilobite, but to do that, you need to know the morphological features. So complete your notes on this topic, and remember to come up with your interesting question, so you can bring that back to class. I'll see you then.